Hello, everyone. Uh, this presentation will be a teaser, so it, it will not be a complete pres presentation itself, but rather it will be a teaser uh, for the today panel's discussion. And uh, I think it's also interesting when we were discussing the topics with Olena that uh, not many of the banks were enthusiastic about uh, participating in the panel. So we are, you know, trying to uh, make you banks being more excited about bank interoperability and open banking today. So if you will be a little bit more enthusiastic than you were before, I think we all will be happy. Uh, why can we talk today about uh, interoperability and open banking? There are certain enable, enablers to uh, this because we have technological advancements such as the uh, cloud infrastructures and cloud-based solutions being uh, more widespread and enabling uh, also the API integrations. And or, you know, just because of these technology enablers, we also have the regulatory push, uh, just like open banking, uh, PSD2 uh, in Europe, but not just in Europe, worldwide. And um, the, there are also standardization initiatives, just like the ISO 2022, which is a great thing and ongoing thing. And uh, even if, I guess, uh, banks more like feel the pain and the burden of the transition, on the long term, I think it will be largely pay off for the whole financial community and for the whole world. Uh, I would like you to guide through just the evolution of, of open banking and what is happening and how it's happening. This will be very simple figures, but I think it will uh, be very understandable why, uh, or why interoperability and standardization is important for banks and everyone. So we started open banking, then uh, the open banking regulations made banks to expose their APIs and provide third-party providers uh, with data. That was kind of a you know one-way relationship. It was you know compulsory for banks to provide some data, and obviously not all the banks were happy about it because one they had to do it. On the other hand, they were also protective of their data assets. Uh, what is happening more like today is that everyone talks about ecosystems uh, and how, we, how a bank can you know, be part of an ecosystem. First of all, it can orchestrate an ecosystem or it, it can build its own ecosystem. In this model, what happens is that the bank sits in the middle and a lot of uh, third-party applications are integrated with the uh, bank, and the bank uh, is the uh, initiator, and when the customer logs into the banking uh, with a single sign-on or onboarding integration, it will all uh, also have access, so the customer will also have access to all the third-party applications. If the bank is not the orchestrator, but simply a participant uh, in the ecosystem, then this relationship can change, and the bank uh, is integrated to other systems, then I think uh, we can talk about embedded finance here. Uh, this is what is happening now, but you know, as you can see, the number of the arrows increases, uh, increases on the figures. But what will be the future is that everyone will be connected to everyone. And then in this way, uh, the integrations will be numerous, or the integration needs will be numerous. And, uh, and if, you need, if you have to do this, or if you must do this, then uh, the integration efforts will kill all the business cases. So this is the reason why interoperability is important, because if you work with standardized data, both with your relationship with the outside world and inside, then you have to work much less than before, and you can focus on your business instead of the, you know, just doing the integrations. So that is why we think 
uh, open networks and interoperability is good. I thought it would be also a good idea to bring you an example. Uh, this will be a case study from India. If you are interested in more details, just uh, visit indiastech.org, then you can read the whole story. Uh, what is uh, miraculous in India that they started the journey back in 2019 uh, with, a, with a concept of an open network and uh, implementing standardized APIs in various, uh, various uh, uh, layers. One is the identity layer, and that is what was, uh, Vaslav was uh, talking about this morning. Uh, there is a payments layer. I think the most important development there is the UPI, the Unified Payments Interface. And there is a data layer which enables uh, other applications with standardized APIs. I won't take uh, too much time uh, on the use cases, but, but there, are, uh, there is an account aggregator use case and there is an open credit enablement network. The whole idea is that they have the really standardized API, they have an open network, and the results that they reach, I think this is, these figures are really uh, talkative. If uh, just because they had the uh, e, uh, e identity back in 2009, uh, you can see that the, the change uh, that would have uh, the time that would, would have been needed uh, without this would have been like 40 plus years. And instead of that, they reached, uh, I think, 80% uh, uh, bank account penetration compared to the very low base uh, from where they started. And uh, you can also see the statistics for UPI. This is a you know massive increase, and uh, and the change uh, is really spectacular. What has uh, taken place since two thousand, even in the last uh, uh, three years, when they started to uh, introduce more and more use cases, among others, invoicing uh, in the country in various uh, stages. So. The success factors are just uh, the use of open technology and uh, open standard and technology, decentralization and open networks. And I think what is also important is to find the right balance between the regulation and the competition, where to cooperate and uh, where to compete. So this would be my presentation and looking for the panel discussion. Thank you very much.